Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India learners i am dr himani singh working as an assistant professor in the institute of business management gla university mathura i am going to take a course in fact it is a very very important course for budding managers that's professional communication at workplace and the session 1 talks about communication at workplace learners we are going to cover different aspects in this session not only we are going to understand that what we mean by professional communication and its role for budding managers also we are going to talk about the basic nature of professional communication apart from this i will be also talking about the basic process of communication and how the different factors tends to impact the communication process also in this session i am going to cover the different tools which present day organizations are using for effective communication with this i will be highlighting the classification of communication as well as the networks of communication taken care in the end i will try to wind up my session by covering the points that why this communication subject that's professional communication is actually very much important for budding managers so now let's begin with the very first thing of this course that with the line communication is par yes it is par now why i am saying that it is par as we do believe that par is the ability to influence an individual as per your own choice so yes through communication you can create a good or a bad impact thus we do believe that those who have mastered in the communication skills they can change their own experience of the world or contrary to this the world's experience of them can also be changed not just this in fact all the behaviors as well as the feelings find their original roots from the communication it is already stated by tony robbins not just this when i say that communication is par yes with effective and impactful communication you can go on in the ladder of success and can reach the heights but yes when we fall short of communication skills many a times the things the information are there in our head but we are not able to express our feelings and there is the need of professional communication in sales for the budding managers as if i talk about a research which states that 70% of an individual's time is used while communicating so 70% of a day's time you are spending while communication whether it is reading writing and so on but just think about it that 70% of your time you are spending in communication so how important this particular concept is for you and moreover when you became a manager and you need to interact with different people around you you really need to focus upon the skill now when we talk about communication yes it is derived from a latin word which is communis now what does it mean it mean common to share or to impart so that is what is communication about so a question comes in my mind what is communication communication is basically 
sharing of thoughts, emotions, feelings, gestures with other people around you. A very important aspect when we talk about communication. Yes, I said that you share the thoughts, you share the emotions, you share the feelings, but at the same time, you need to be sure that it should be communicated or it should be transferred in the similar manner to the receiver and it should be received in the similar manner in which you wanted to transfer. Now, when we say communication, a question comes into my mind that what we mean by professional communication. Why I am talking about communication, communication from last few minutes. You might be thinking that since your birth, you all are communicating with the people around you. So now why I am talking about bringing a course, bringing a subject to be studied upon. See learners, when we talk about professional communication, yes, I completely agree that you people are communicating since your birth, either through gestures or through the language. But at the same time, when we talk about corporate houses, you really need to know the basic business etiquettes that how you need to communicate. What are the different mediums when it comes for communication? What are the different channels? What are the different networks? How you should go on for networking with the people around you? So yes, professional communication is when we talk about sharing the information, feelings, emotions and so on around the people at the corporate world. Yes. It has certain etiquette, it has certain code of conduct which tends to differ from our daily communication patterns. That's why the need is to study professional communication. Yes, now I am going to elaborate more into this aspect that why to study professional communication, why I am talking about bringing communication as a subject. The very first point when we talk about professional communication is present joint corporate houses. Yes, these days we do have joint organizations wherein thousands of people are working around. Gone are the days when we used to have very less people working in the organization. Only 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, more over 100, 250, but now Contrary to this, thousands of people are working under one head, that is under one name. Now, when it comes to communicate with so many people around you, you really need to think about that which medium you should go on for, which channel you should go on for, what language you will be using so that you should not be misinterpreted or there should be no distortion. Now, take an example. If you want to communicate some changes in the rules and regulations or policies of the organization with 5,000 plus people working in your organization, how are you going to communicate? Which medium? Are you going to text them? Or you are going to call them through a telephone? Or you are going to send an email? Or you are going to use a WhatsApp message? Which pattern? Which medium? What is the formal way of communicating such change in the rules and regulations or the policies to the people? That you really need to think about. And yes, the problem has arises because we do have joint organizations, very big corporate houses. So we really need to think about this. Not just this, when we talk about big corporate houses, there is another very important aspect that why that motivates or I should say that fosters me to think about that yes, budding managers should study about the professional communication. That is workplace diversity. What is workplace diversity? Yes, it's there in your mind when people of different religion, different caste, different creed, different nation, different gender, different age group are working in one organization. Of course, it's a very nice thing that we are getting people from different areas under one head. So of course, we are going to get new ideas, creativity, uh, new thoughts, new beliefs, new values. But at the same time, do you really think that it is so simple to manage different people of different mindset? No, 
you really need to understand that how are you going to communicate with them, which language you will be using, what words you are going to use. Might be possible that when you are meeting or when you are interacting with a person of your same age group, you might be using some informal language. But when it comes to interaction with a person who is quite elder to you might be possible that he might feel disregard if you are going to use some slangs or some bad language. So yes, you really need to think about that how are you going to communicate with the diverse workforce in your organization. Next, yes, why you need to study this subject is about right technology advancement at right place. Every other day we are coming up with new technology. We really need to understand that how to communicate, how to set this with our people working in our organization as well as with the people with whom we are dealing into our business. It can be government, it can be competitors, it can be your stakeholders, your customers. So yes, you this is again an important aspect that why you should study professional communication. Apart from this, when we talk about human relations and public relations, yes, they are interconnected, they are different. Uh, if I talk about a basic difference here, I am talking about human relations in terms in the context of internal employees and when I'm talking about public relations I'm talking in terms of the external people with whom we are going to communicate. Now again if you really want to have good human relations in your workplace you really need to have good communication. If professional communication is missing at your workplace you might be having bad or poor human relations develop among the people working in your organization. Not just this, not just with the people working in your organization, you really need to set good relations with the people in the publics, that's your customers. You really need to communicate and very often if you're not communicating with them, they might feel that they are somewhere else. They are not with you, they are not on the same page. So yes, you really need to communicate with them. Apart from this, as we are moving into a culture of team culture, which is again a very important aspect. Gone are the days when we used to foster, or rather I should say when the company managers used to foster individual working. These days we have started talking about developing good teams. And when it comes to teamwork or to team culture, we really need to have good communication skills with the people around us. Because if we are lacking communication skills, might be possible we are not able to gel them with us. We are not able to patch up with them. We are not able to communicate or to share the information which is in my head. So yes, team culture is another very, very important aspect or you can say a very important factor which is talking about that yes, as a manager, you really need to study professional communication. It might be possible that in a team, there is, there are different team members and some of the team members might be your friends. But again, when it comes to team culture, you really need to focus upon that how are you going to communicate with them when you are the part of a team. Not just this, in fact, also it talks about enhancing employability. Yes, I think that you people are going to be more focused on this particular aspect, employability. Because when I am talking about professional communication, we are more focused and we want ourselves to be more employable. And yes, this is a fact that people who tend to have good communication skills. Communication skills is not only about speaking English or speaking any other language. It is more about expressing yourself also, sharing the information that is verbally as well as non-verbally. So people who look confident, 
who are confident through their words, who are confident through their nonverbal posture, nonverbal language, they are selected very easily. See, I am trying to motivate you to why you should go on for study this course. Reason behind, as a manager, you are also going to go through with a rigorous interview process. And when it is an interview process, you really need to focus upon how you speak, what you speak. And that covers communication. Apart from this, one more point I am going to tell you is organizational structures have evolved a lot. When industries grow, were in the growing phase, there were very simple structures, very simple, wherein a boss used to be there, he used to handle different people because number of people were small. We were not having more than 5, 10, 15, 20 people working in the organization. Yes, this particular point is somewhere connected with the very first point that's present joint corporate houses. Just because the organizations are expanding in number, in size, that's why we are coming up, we are evolving with new organizational structures. And the moment when I say that organizational structures are evolving, yes, we are moving a little bit towards more complex structures. And again, it becomes a little bit difficult for us to manage or to communicate and interact with the people in complex organizational structures. Undoubtedly, these complex organizational structures are in fact helping the organization to grow. So I'm not talking about that complex organizational structures are bad. No, not at all. I'm simply talking about that how we should make ourselves more compatible, more comfortable while communicating in the complex organizational structures. That is what is very important and I hope you people are able to understand that out of team culture, joint corporate houses, different organizational structures and so on, these are the points that why you should go on for study professional communication and why it is the need of an hour. Moving forward, I just want to highlight that how professional communication is characterized. Now in this, the very first point which I would like to highlight is that communication process talks about two-way. That means it says that yes, communication is a two-way process. What we mean by two-way process? Two-way process means that yes, I am communicating, I am sending something to you, I am transferring some information to you, but at the same time, you are also giving me some feedback that whether you are able to understand or you are not able to understand. So when we say two-way process, in present day organization, you will be finding that communication is actually a two-way process wherein the management used to communicate with the shop floor workers, with the operational level workers and at the same time the operational level workers or middle level management can also communicate their problems, their issues, their new ideas with the top management. And when you are finding that this is happening in an organization, so we do say that this organization follows communication which is having two-way flow. And yes, of course, when we talk about an organization's growth, two-way process in communication is very much required. Again, I'll say that in past, we used to have organizations wherein we used to focus just on one-way communication, wherein only the boss used to communicate. There was, they, he never thought of taking their feedback that they understood, the employees understood or not. But when we talk about effective communication, mark my words, I'm saying effective communication. It is that it should be two-way process. You should communicate as a sender and at the same time the receiver should send some feedback either in the form of verbal way or non-verbal way in the form of some gestures, some expressions and so on. So yes, it is a two-way process. With this one more thing which I would like to highlight upon is that Communication is about information sharing 
and developing the understanding about that information. It's not only that I have shared some information, but at the same time, if we talk about effective communication, it is more about sharing as well as developing the understanding for that information. And yes, if understanding is missing, then yes, you really need to think about that whether you are moving on the right direction, talking about communication, but no, that is ineffective communication. With this, I also would like to highlight that communication is characterized by being verbal as well as non-verbal communication. Now, when I say verbal, verbal is spoken language, a spoken language or written language. When we talk about verbal communication, if I am speaking something to you or if I am writing something and sending it to you, that becomes the verbal part of communication. But verbal part of communication is important, but at the same time, we cannot forget the role of non-verbal part. Now, when I say non-verbal, non-verbal is about your expressions, your eye contact, your body posture, your um, handshakes and so on. That is more about and yes, we do say action speaks louder than words. So yes, it is that non-verbal communication also plays a very, very important aspect. So communication is a combination of verbal as well as non-verbal aspect. We cannot talk about that it is only verbal. It is also non-verbal aspect of the communication. Apart from this, I would also like to highlight another important characteristic of verbal communication, which is that it is about dynamic interaction. Why I am saying dynamic? What we mean by being dynamic? Yes, communication is dynamic. My way of communication is very different from your way of communication. My way of communication in this situation is very different from my way of communication in some other situation. For example, if I am dealing with 30x people, 30x people, that means somewhere or the other, the, I have a point of view that my employees are not self-motivated until and unless they are not being given orders, they won't work. So if I'm into this situation, where I believe or where my point of view is that my people are not self-motivated, they don't want to work. So in that situation, my pattern of communication, my way of communication is going to be very, very different when I am going to communicate with theory why people. Why? Because I believe that theory why people, they are self-motivated, they can do their own tasks, they like to take responsibility. So with them, my way of communication pattern will be very different. Here in the situation A, I am giving orders, I am giving instructions for every small thing. But in situation B, where I am dealing with theory Y people, I might not be wondering. I might not be communicating each and every bit of information to them because I know that the work will be done. So yes, communication pattern is going to be very, very different. As I said, that as a person, my communication pattern is very different from yours. At the same time, my communication pattern is very different in situation one, in situation two, and so on, because I tend to be dynamic, and each and every one of us needs to be that, because we are managers. Not just this, we also say that communication is about circular flow. Yes, it is. As I explained you about the two-way process, it is, I am sending something to you, you are sending it back to me. So what it is, it is a kind of circular flow which keeps on moving and not with this, I also would like to highlight that it is continuous in nature. In the organization, we cannot say that communication stops, not at all. If you are thinking that yes, you are going to stop communicating with the people around you, sorry, you are not thinking in the right direction. It keeps on going. You might be communicating with some person, with some other person, and so on, not verbally, non-verbally, it keeps on going, it keeps on going. With this, there's one more aspect, one more characteristic, which I would like to focus upon is that 
communication is pervasive in nature. What do you mean by pervasiveness? Yes, some people do say that pervasiveness means which is present everywhere. But see students, when I talk about professional communication, I am not talking about present everywhere. What I want to focus upon is that it is present at all levels of management. Irrespective of the fact that you are the part of top management, middle or lower, you need to communicate. Yes, direction might differ, way might differ, medium might differ, but for sure, you need to communicate. You cannot think of that, okay, I will not communicate. No, you need to communicate continuously as well as pervasive way. That means present at all levels of management, top, middle, lower irrespective of the fact in which level you fall. Last but not the least one, in fact it is one of the most important characteristic of professional communication that is human activity. What is communication? It is of course a human activity because I am dealing with humans while communicating right at workplace. My point is professional communication. So it is a human activity, we need to understand humans, we need to understand their communication patterns, we need to share the information with them. So yes, specifically communication, professional communication is a human activity wherein we are dealing with the people around us and we are trying to communicate our point of conversation to them. So these are the points through which we can characterize professional communication at workplace. Now, as I said, as I keep on saying again and again that you are going to become a manager very soon. So when you become manager, you are going to perform different roles, different roles. Certain times you are going to be in the decisional role, certain times you will be into the licensing roles or as a spokesperson or some informational roles, decisional. Of course, you are going to be the part of any role. Now, when I say that any role, whether it is licensing or whatsoever it is, you are going to perform certain activities, certain functions you will be performing there. Now for that, for that you really need to have good communication skills. For example, if I talk about the very first point that is issuing of orders and instructions. If I talk, take this point, yes, when you become managers, you, you are going to issue certain instructions, certain orders. Now see, your pattern, how you are going to issue that order, how you are going to instruct that people, that decides the successful implementation of that order or instruction. Might be possible the way I am adopting or I am instructing my people, they are not finding it good or I am using some negative mode of interaction. So they are not happy with that, so they might not be obeying my order but they might obey your order because the tone which you used for conveying, the method, the medium which you used for conveying, that was good enough. They liked the, that positive tone of yours, but they didn't like the negative tone of mine. So what it is, the way I am going to communicate. So yes, as a manager, you are going to be performing different roles. So yes, you need to have good professional communication skills because you will be issuing the orders, you will be sometimes educating people. Now, how you educate people, that also uh, decides your successful education, that whether your people are going to learn or they are not going to learn anything. Apart from this, as a manager, you will be exchanging information with your subordinates, with your seniors, with your colleagues, linked with certain functions which you perform at workplace. Also, you will be giving advices by the people or you will be giving advice to the people. You will be counseling people, you will be mentoring people and at certain times, as I said, that you might be ending up into the licensing role, therein you need to persuade people you need to convince as a marketer if you are marketing some of your products or some of your services also you will be in a mode wherein you will be suggesting certain ideas certain um, you are going to solve certain problems of your people so yes you will be in different roles and for all these roles giving warning motivating your people you really need to have dynamic communication skills 
and the moment you owe those dynamic communication skills, you are a leader, you become a leader. As I started my course with the line that communication is power, so you become more powerful or else I should say that you exercise power through your communication over others. With this, I am going to talk about the communication process, the basic communication process. Yes, there is a sender. First, I will just draw it here and then I will be explaining this figure to you people. Medium, then we go for decoding, then we go for receiver and yes, we do show feedback with some dotted lines. I will explain you that why, why I have drawn the dotted lines. Not just this, I would also like to highlight some noise. Now this noise can be anywhere. Don't think that it is only at one point, it can be at any point. You can mark noise anywhere. Now see, I'll start with the sender. Yes, whenever we talk about the communication process, it starts from the sender. There is a person who wants to send some message. Some people also call it as message because sender is going to have a message in his mind and he wants to send this message to the receiver. Now sender, what sender is going to do? That sender is going to encode the message. Now when I say encoding, he is going to try or he will try to bring that message in the format in which he thinks that the other person can interpret. So, Sender is going to encode the message. Yes, we can also say that encoding is more about articulating the message in the proper way. Of course, the perception of sender, uh, you can say that the perception of sender tends to impact the encoding or tends to impact the articulation of that message. Once that message is being articulated, then this message needs to be transferred through some medium. Now again, when I started my subject, I said one thing that yes, if you want to share some information related to change in the rules, policies, procedures of the organization with your employees, which medium you will choose? You will go with the written medium, you will go with the verbal sharing, what? So like this, you need to choose the medium that what is the correct way, correct way, correct mode of sending that information from the sender to the receiver. Now, see, I just want to highlight one thing. You might be seeing that I have written decoding here. I have written this, the receiver here. Now, when we talk in terms of human communication, I am going to replace this because when we talk about human communication, we believe that first some receiver is receiving the message and then it is being decoded. Now purpose, why I purposefully put decoding first? Because yes, that is also a way of process of communication when we talk in terms of technology or machine. But when we talk in terms of human communication, we believe that until and unless there is no receiver, who is going to decode the information? So yes. I have changed this figure now, you can see from sender, sender is going to articulate the message, then he is going to select the medium and through that medium, the receiver is going to receive that information and the moment receiver is going to receive that information, he is going to articulate or decode that information in his own pattern, in his own manner. Of course, now 
the articulation or the decoding is going to be impacted by the personality perception of the receiver. Now comes the next part. When I say communication is a two way or circular process, once the receiver decoded the message, then he needs to send the feedback to the sender. I have drawn these dotted lines. The purpose for drawing dotted lines out here is that many a times feedback is not that much prominent. For example, if someone asks me, did you understand this? So I am simply nodding my head. That certain times becomes a thing which people believe that it is not that much prominent. Or someone asks me, do you have any problem? I am not speaking anything, neither I am nodding nor I am speaking and people are tend to perceive, tend to take that feedback that I do not have any problem. So certain times this happens, so that is why we put feedback with the dotted lines. Although effective communication always believes, do not mark me wrong, effective communication always believes that you really need to have some feedback. Now coming to the noise part. This is not only the physical noise which we are hearing, right? It is more about that. It is more about the barriers, the distortions of communication. Now, it can be anywhere. Might be the sender is not able to encode the information in the right manner or that sender was not able to select the right medium, that is why, or the receiver out of his own personality, own perceptions, he, that receiver is not able to decode the message in the similar manner in which the sender wanted to get it interpreted. So, noise is there and not just this, in fact many a times there is a noise in feedback as well. You ask me a question that do you have any problem? I say, but might be possible, I am not telling you the truth. I am denying through my non-verbal gesture, but I am not telling you the truth. Might be possible, I might be having some problem or I might not be having some problem, whatsoever it is, right? So this talks about the communication process, which is very, very important. And yes, dear learners, you really need to think upon that how to encode, which medium to select upon, because these decisions are very important decisions. And many a times you tend to just beautifully encode the message, but you tend to end up choosing the wrong medium. So it is again a problematic situation you are into, you are being troubled into that. So this was about the communication process. Now moving forward, I will be talking about tools for effective communication. Now when we talk about effective communication, these days organizations are being redefined, not just this, they need to collaborate, they are exchanging information with the people around them. They need to cater to the customer needs. So for that, they are coming up with wireless networks, electronic presentations when it comes about redefining the workplaces. And when it talks about collaborating at the workplaces, yes, these days we do have web-based meetings, we do have shared workspaces, voice technologies, yes, I will be speaking and it will be translated to the computer effective uh, language. So yes, these are some ways by which we are able to go on for effective communication. Apart from this, exchanging information, yes, podcast, extranet, these are some of the ways by which we are sharing the information with the people around us. So yes, these are the tools which you as a manager can make use at your workplace for effective and impactful communication. Moving further, I will be talking about types of communication. When we talk about types of communication, it is majorly categorized into three categories based on channel, based on direction, based on mode of expression. Based on channel, I will be discussing formal as well as informal 
based on direction we have upward, downward, lateral and horizontal mode of expression we have verbal and non-verbal. Fine, I will start with the very first one that is based on the for uh, based on the channel. So, on the basis of channel it is categorized into two categories that is formal channel and informal channel. When I talk about formal channel, yes formal channel when the channel or the network or the path of communication is predetermined by the organization. So, yes it follows chain of command when I say that we do follow a scalar chain in the formal pattern yes it becomes a bit slow because too many levels are there which we need to cross upon. Undoubtedly when we talk about formal one it is task oriented. Contrary to this if I talk about the informal one it is independent of any chain of command there is no scalar chain it is one of the most fast way of communication it is people oriented as I said task oriented and it is people oriented why I am saying this because formal communication channel we preferably use for completing the task accomplishment of the task whereas informal communication channel is basically used to inculcate a pattern to inculcate or to satisfy the social needs of the people. Can you imagine that you are going to a workplace and you are not interacting with anyone, you are not talking to anyone apart from your work. Yes, you are talking about work but apart from your work, see we all are human beings, we do have social needs and when I say we do have social needs, yes we really want to have some friendly connections, we really want to share some personal problems or personal emotions as well with the other people around us. So, in an organization you need to have informal channels as well. Apart from this if I talk about the formal one it is one of the most systematic way of uh, communication pattern yes it can be oral it can be written. Now if I talk about the informal channel it is also known as grapevine communication part why I am saying grapevine any idea yes grapevine because as you might have seen in the grapevine you cannot find the source, you cannot identify the source. Similarly, in this you cannot identify the source. From where the communication started, from where it ended, you will not be able to find the source. Yes, we do believe that informal communication at the same time is required, but uh, many a times when it transforms into the rumors, then it is bad then it is not the appropriate way of communication inside the organization. So yes, we need to take care of that aspect. So why I am saying mostly oral, you will be finding that informal communication preferably if it is grapevine and we want to go into the rumors aspect, it is going to be mostly oral, never written because with written communication we can identify the source. So it, it is just a distinction. So I hope it is clear in your mind that how formal and informal communication channel is different. Now moving further on the basis of direction of message. Now I am just going to highlight that how on the basis of direction you can have different types of communication. Sorry I just wrote B again. A communicating to here it is D communicating to A and E communicating to D. Also this and C communicating to D. Now I hope as the picture is very clear and we can see that when A is communicating to B and B is communicating to C this becomes downward communication right. 
downward yes it is required inside the organization when the top management needs to uh, share uh, certain changes certain rules regulations policies certain orders they want to give the certain instructions they want to give so for that we need to have downward communication opposite to this is e communicating to d d communicating to a this is known as upward communication now when i say upward that means yes many a times the middle the lower level manager communicating to the up middle level middle to the top level and that's how things are flowing yes uh, this also takes place inside the organization when the lower level managers or the or the junior or the subordinate or rather i should say they are having some good ideas they are having some problems they are having some grievances and they want to discuss they want to uh, talk about something some issue linked with some rule regulation they can go on communicating upward now the third category which i'm going to highlight here is lateral also known as horizontal also known as sideward now when c communicating to e yes in an organization there are going to be situations when you need to communicate with your colleague so first uh, first condition in this is that people of similar level of management fine similar level and second condition it can be intra departmental or it can be interdepartmental intra or inter see an hr executive when communicating with another hr executive that becomes intra departmental people at the same level and they are communicating so that is an example of lateral communication again another thing when an hr executive interacting with finance executive for some collaboration or coordination of work then also it is lateral communication now comes the fourth aspect that is diagonal people at different levels of management different levels of management when they communicate second condition is that they need to be of different departments that's why we are not calling it as downward or upward because diagonal is when people of different departments communicate and people of different levels of management these are the two conditions for diagonal i hope this is clear to you moving further on the basis of method of expression in verbal we have oral and written right at non verbal communication we have gestures expressions facial expressions eye contact and so on this we are going to elaborate in further sessions that's why i am cutting it short i am just telling you that verbal communication is when we communicate through spoken language or written language and non verbal when we communicate through our gestures eye contact head posture and so on now moving to the next part that is about communication network now when i say communication network it is representing the pattern of contact among the members of an organization so it is based on two aspects first is nature of channel and the second is number of people involved into that channel now the very first way of communication network is single strand now single strand when we say that yes it represents scalar chain in just one chain in just one direction things are moving either upward or downward yes it is in fact good for organizations which are having less number of people working because if there are going to be n number of people working in an organization this becomes quite time taking and yes one more disadvantage of this is undoubtedly this is one of the most simple one as i spoke about the advantage but if i talk about the disadvantage yes uh, somewhere distortions are more because too many levels are there and when communication goes from one to other second to third third to fourth and so on 
message is being distorted. So that's one negative aspect of this particular network. Moving further, we do have wheel communication network. Now you people might have seen a wheel of a cycle. It is looking like that only. We do have a hub part in the center which is connected with the people around. Now yes, I think that you people can see that one person who is falling into the center, he is actually the center part and he only needs to communicate with the people around him, right? So he is the person who is having the decision making authority, who is guiding these or who is giving orders and instructions to these people and these people can share their issues with the center person only. Good, quite a good one that yes, one person is taking care of all the decisions but again, when many people are going to be associated with him, his efficiency of taking decisions might be impacted. So good, good for small, but again, when it is becoming large people, one person is going to be, again, a problematic situation might arise. He is not able to take much of the decisions or he is not able to cater to the problems of many people around him. Next is about circular. Now, yes, circular communication pattern you will be finding majorly where people are interdependent for their work or you can say teams are there, right? Normally, when we talk about this circular communication network, it takes place when people of similar level of management are there and if in case some other level management person also forms the part of this group or is of this team then he also behaves like as if he is at the similar level. Yes, this particular network is successful when one person is dependent on the other, other is dependent on the other and that is how the circular flow moves on uh, but again a problematic situation is this if one person is not accomplishing the task the other person cannot do. So that is one negative aspect but yes for good teamwork wherein we go on for having multi skills so that we can get the advantage of different skills from different people. This is a very nice network. Moving further, we do have free flow of communication network. I will just draw this. Yes, as you can see, the name itself is suggesting free flow. Just think yourself wherever you can draw the arrows. Communication can take place in the very free form. Yes, it is very quick as well because there is no structure, no set pattern and yes, informal way is more common when we talk in context of free flow of communication. So see, all these different networks are good. I won't say that one is bad or one is good. Yes, they do have certain positives and negatives and you really need to think upon that which method you should go on for. If you are having a workforce who really wants to be getting orders, who should be always given instructions, go for single strand. There's no problem. If you have a small team, go for that circular one. So you need to think upon that in which situation you should go on for which network. That's why I said communication is a dynamic process. You need to come up with the different ways. Yes, towards the end, I am going to talk about quickly that how professional communication, that's 1.0 versus 2.0. Earlier, it was more of a lecture kind of communication used to take place in the organizations, but now, it is more of the discussion way, wherein the employees tends to participate in the decision making in the discussion and together management and the employees, they work together. So that's why communication, communication pattern has evolved in the communication, in the organizational communication. Earlier, it used to be unidirectional as I explained you, one way process it used to be, but now it is bi or multidirectional. One too many, 
one person was the head he was controlling many people he was communicating with many people but now it is like one to many is there but at the same time it's many to many as i have just shown you in the free flow of communication network many to many was there one person was connected with different people around him different people were connected with different people again so yes initially it was low message frequency why are we saying low message frequency because somewhere when we talk about the past organizations there was no much of the technology was not there too much of information was not being floated but now as things are changing very fast so somewhere we need to go on for coming up with new ways we are coming up with different messages and that's why we do say high message frequency these days we are having initially we were having few channels but now we are evolving more and more channels so that communication can be effective more in the organizations also information hoarding one person holding all the information but now it is more about information sharing so that's why we do say present day organizations are focusing on effective communication not just this initially it was a static right now i have already explained you that why it is dynamic and why you need to be dynamic from hierarchical we are moving to the egalitarian where in support of, is there from structures to we are moving to the amorphous structures flexible structures also isolation to collaboration and last but not the least one yes initially the organizations were reactive organization so their communication patterns were like that only but now the organizations are proactive organization so their communication needs to be like that only they need to be step ahead of their customers thinking of their competitors thinking gone are the days that when you will see what customers want and then you will design the product then you will launch the product gone are those days you need to be in continuous communication so that you can become proactive and you can survive in the market so dear learners i hope in this session you are able to understand what is professional communication what are the basic nature characteristics and yes how noise impacts the process of communication also the tools for effective communications were being discussed at workplace and yes i discussed the classification as well as the communication patterns the communication network different communication networks or read all these and then select wisely that which is good for your organization and yes as you know that we have been evolving from 1.0 to 2.0 organization so we need to have brilliant communication skills so that we can stood ourselves as well as we can make our organizations more successful thank you and happy learning